and welcome back to part two of the Professor Fra Flaxbeard's Wondrous Steam Power mod. Today I'm going to show you guys some of the more advanced setups you can do in this mod, and just some of the whole fun stuff, reasons why we even do mods. Okay, so here we go, right now. And welcome back to part two of the Wondrous Steam Power Mod by Professor Flaxbeard. Now, the next set of tools I'm going to be showing you how to make are multiple, multiple part tools, so you have to make other components in order to make a lot of these, or they have to be used in conjunction with other devices. So that's why I'm splitting this up the way that I did. So a lot of these tools are going to require one or two of these guys. We have a brass piston and a steam turbine. Brass piston you make with a pipe, three brass plates, and a piston, a normal piston. And you get one of these little guys. Unfortunately, it's it's not an item that you can like put on display, so it has to be in a little frame there like that. Yeah, it's kind of it just sits there and looks like something, but it's really not. And then we have the steam turbine, which is four plates with a nugget and you get the steam turbine. Now these two parts you will need to have in order to make the rest of the parts. And so we're going to start off with the hand tools. And this one is the steam drill. Now what this thing will do, it will drill through rock and break it up just like a pickaxe, but the steam tools don't break. They just run off steam and will run out of steam. To make all of these parts you got this basic four part setup here that all of these hand tools use as kind of the body of the thing. So there's always going to be two pipes and a turbine for all three of these tools. This one you're going to need a total of three brass plates, two iron plates, and an iron nugget, and you get the drill. Next to that we got the steam saw. Again, two pipes, steam turbine, brass plate, three iron plates, and two iron nuggets, and you'll have this guy. Next up, we have the steam shovel. Can you guess what this one does? Steam turbine, two pipes, three brass plates, and three iron plates, and you'll have the steam shovel. Now, these guys by themselves don't really do anything until they get powered. And how do you fill them up with that steam? You need one of these guys. The steam filler. Three pipes, four blocks of cobblestone, and you get this guy. And so right now I've got the, uh, the shovel. And so this isn't hooked up to steam power, so it's not going to work. But basically all you do you right click, you put your tool in there, and then it starts to fill up the tool with the steam. And then you just go up to whatever you're working with, whether it be sand, dirt, trees, and you know, stone, and then you start just doing what you would do with the normal tools. And yeah, that's pretty much how that works. So this by itself is meaningless unless you have these tools and these tools by themselves don't work without one of these guys. So these are companion tools and you know you just gotta set things up in your shop to work with them accordingly. <clears throat> so now let's say you got some stuff you want to crush. Um, whether it be you have a cobblestone machine, you have an automated tree farm, you know these guys will crush anything that gets between them. And to make one of these guys you need three brass plates, three of those brass pistons, and three iron plates. Now you only get one of these pistons, one of these crushers with this recipe, so you have to do this two times to get a working system. Once you got the working system together, you place them facing each other and whenever they pick up a block in between them, they will smash it. 
There's different settings for this guy now with the two, uh, the 0.25 beta, and you can change it from uh, what were the options? Crusher and Smasher. Now one setting will say like you have stone between it. It will crush the rock so much that it will turn it into gravel. If uh, you have it on the other setting, it will just uh, take that stone and smash it down into collectible cobblestone. So that's the difference between the two settings on these guys. And you do that with a uh, pipe wrench, and I'll show you that in a minute here. Now, let's say you have an area you want to mine, but you don't want to spend all the time mining it. Well, that's where this guy comes in. This is the thumper. Think of it as a massive pile driver. And uh, I don't have this thing out on display for one very ex good reason. So it's it's big. It's a big tool. Um, you got a block of iron. Yes, that is a block of iron. And two blocks of brass. Two pistons, two pipes, and two brass plates. And you get this from it. Yeah, it is four blocks tall, and it is loud when it starts going. Now pipes, hooking this thing up, you can only hook it up at the bottom here. So just keep that in mind when you're laying stuff out. Put that guy away. Alright, so these next two things you have to have both of them to get their system to work. So first we have the astrolabe. Now this guy you make pretty much the same way that you would make a compass. You have four brass ingots and a little bit of redstone, and that accomplishes making this tool. This is basically a sighting tool for the mortar. Now to make the mortar, you got four brass plates, a piston, and three copper plates. Now to get a mortar to work, you need to be able to give it material. Uh, typically it's done with a hopper, so you have a hopper attached to it like you would a chest or a furnace and it will take the items that are in the hopper and fire them off into the sky. Now you have to assign a target to the mortar and to do that you have to physically go somewhere and unfortunately you can't do it by just pointing at a direction and, and picking it. You have to you have to be able to actually so, you know, have your cursor on it, have the block being selected, right click with the shift to get the coordinates, come back over to the mortar, right click on the mortar, and it will turn. And now it will be aiming for that area. Now it's not going to hit directly on that block, it's going to hit a range of that block. So we're going to fire off the astrolabe. Oh yeah. And it's going to come back down somewhere in that area. There it is. And even though we selected over here, it's on the wall. And it looks like it's you know attached to a you know a small bomb. And that's how that system works. Now, as far as I'm aware, there is no limitation to how far this thing can fire. So you could, in theory, set it up so that uh, let's say you have a secondary base somewhere or you have a buddy on a map with you and you have something that they need and uh, you can potentially have multiple of these guys set up each with a pre-designated target and just fire off material from your base to where they're at so they can get what they need in order to do whatever it is they're doing probably trolling you in some way or another so Next new thing in the mod with the uh, 0.25 beta is the steam fan and the steam vacuum. Steam fan is pretty neat. You can uh, change its range of how fa far it will blow stuff from 5 blocks to 19 blocks. And to make one, you need the steam turbine, 2 iron bars, and 6 brass plates. And you get this guy. Now you see, it is kind of a, I'll call it a third of a block. It's not quite half, it's kind of like a third. So you can actually have this in a corridor and you can actually squeak by. I've, I've done it. So, yeah. And it's 
pretty good for pushing raw items around. You can also use it to push mobs around. And it can uh, move quite heavy objects pretty darn far. So let's say you have, I don't know, let's say a witch farm. And uh, they're just standing around. You don't want to deal with the redstone of, you know, making a shifting floor or, you know, them, them just kind of standing around waiting for them to move is kind of boring. You can set up a few of these guys and blow them off the platform down to wherever that you want them to go. Vacuum is pretty much the same deal as the fan, just in reverse. In fact, you need a fan to make the vacuum. So you need one of those steam fans, pipe, and three brass plates, and you get the steam vacuum. Both of these guys you can activate with redstone, so you can set up a little area and be able to turn them off and on with redstone. These are pretty efficient as far as how much steam they use. They don't use a lot of steam to power them. And for that reason, just turning off a valve to them, they're going to keep running for a long time. Even when you break off uh, you know, the pipes feeding the steam to them, they're going to keep going. Now with the vacuum, this is not a connection point for a steam pipe. The steam pipe actually has to come in through one of the four sides. This is where items are expelled out. So this works a lot like a hopper. You can put a, a uh, chest right behind it and it will actually spit stuff into the chest. And so you can think of this as a very wide range hopper, but it's pretty slow. Um, again, you can adjust it from 5 to 19 blocks. And this actually works pretty well if you use it with the thumper for mining. And I will show you a little rig that I got set up for that. First off, let's 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 do let's have a little fun with the uh, the fan here. Got something outside for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys this real quick here. So if you walk up to these things, it'll show you with the uh, this pipe wrench in hand. It'll show you what they're set to as far as their range. You shift and look at it, and then you can adjust the direction or the uh, range on it without holding down the shift button you can adjust the direction of which they are facing now you have to uh, be facing the direction you want to face in order to change that direction you can also up to, go up to pipes and uh, mess with them that way so you can actually have a run of pipes side by side, and if they're connecting and you don't want them to connect, you can disconnect them. Kind of a, a neat little feature that was added in. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna we're gonna have some little fun here. So uh, I've made a little, uh, you can call it an ice, an ice ride, just to show what can happen with this setup. Now I've got some redstone set up underneath here to turn these guys off. And this is a creative mode steam tank to keep this whole system going. So we got our piggy. And our piggy is going round and round. Okay, I'm starting to go back to the pig. I'm turning that off. So yeah, you know, with the the ice, you know, they get moving pretty darn quick. And yeah, so you know, you use this on mob farms to uh, help push things off of the spawning area. Yeah, he agrees with me. And, uh, you know, it just, you know, comes in pretty handy. Let him live. Okay, so here we have a setup with the vacuums and a thumper. This is what I was talking about earlier. So, one neat thing that you can do with these guys is because the way the thumper works it basically starts to open up a large chasm underneath the ground and uh, normally you would have to dig your way down there to collect all the stuff but with a vacuum you can actually set up the vacuum right next to the thumper I've got four set up here and uh, have them collect all of the broken blocks 
into the chest so you don't have to dig your way down there. Now there are some limitations here. You do need to do some prep work for this. You need to break the area out underneath everything here so that the vacuums have as much open area directly underneath them to operate. They, they don't like to be restricted. Uh, you, you do need to get down there, you know, the first couple layers, open up the, the ground a little bit, and then it'll start going. I'm going to change resource packs here real quick to the uh, the strongest craft resource pack, which is a x-ray mod uh, texture pack, and show you what's going on down there. Okay, now I've switched out to the strongest craft uh, resource pack, which is an x-ray mod. Now down there you can see that there is a chasm already from previous testing of this setup. Just to show you guys what is going on here. Now I'm going to turn this thing on and I warn you this th thing is loud. So yeah. And there we go. Now, if we go here, we'll see every once in a while when that thing goes, bro blocks are breaking up as it works. And the vacuums are pulling them and popping in those two chests. Now, if there's any, you know, overhangs down there, it's obviously not going to pull the material from down there, but for the most part, it's going to pull up a large amount of the material so that you don't have to get down there to uh, grab it all. Now, there is some areas over here where, obviously, it's too far away for the vacuums to get to, and you know, this one thumper, it's, it's opening up a pretty wide chasm, and uh, this just makes it a little easier to get a lot of the stuff out. You can obviously you know, go out every so far and drop another vacuum down. It pretty much goes in a line. It doesn't go in a circle or anything. It's just like a reverse. And vent it. And uh, so that's just one way you can pair the different components of these mods together to work together to make everything a little bit easier to do. Alright, so that's in part two of this uh, mod showcase here. Now there's just so much stuff that you can do with this mod. I, I can't put it down into one or two videos. It's going to be three or four. So tune in next time and I'll show you how to put a lot of these things together. More of the advanced stuff like these uh, these crushers here that uh, Thankfully, there's you know there's there's no pressure in the system here. Otherwise, I might be in trouble. Yeah, and yeah, tune in next time, and we will have some fun actually playing with this stuff now that we know how to make all of it. All right, Alcas Zero One saying goodbye.